Ijaz. So this question, I, I actually love it because I, I think I may have mentioned this before, but earlier this year in January, I actually read a book called The CES Letter. And I believe that we have a banner with the link. It's a free book. You can get it as a PDF. I think you can even buy a physical copy, but it's free. It's generally free. You can get it for Kindle or whatever uh, system that you use. So why is this book important? Well, at the start of the year, I wanted to find out because many Christians make this claim towards Muslims. Uh, your, your religion is similar to Joseph Smith, another person taking or co-opting the message of the Jews and the Christians and twisting it to create a new religion. And so I spent a lot of time reading this book and I loved it. Why? The claims of Joseph Smith are not on par with the claims of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let me give an example. So you actually are correct. We do know that Joseph Smith uh, generally used uh, a specific translation of the Quran and copied its challenge. There's just one problem. If you've read the Book of Mormon, I don't have a copy with me. Do forgive me. If you read the Book of Mormon and you open it up, before the page with the table of contents, there's a note at the underneath which says that the edition that they've given you today has been corrected because errors have uh, slipped into its textual tradition. And so the, here's the problem with that. Joseph Smith came with the, this Book of Mormon because he believed that the Bible was already corrupt. And it so ends up now that he himself had multiple versions of his own work to the point that there were contradictions, there were grammatical mistakes, there were uh, things lifted from a very specific book. I think it's either called The Voice of the People or The Voice of Moses. So technically, we know the literary sources he borrowed from. And so it's actually his cousin and him who lived in another state and they attended this gathering from another Christian leader. They took this book, I think it's the voice of the Hebrews, I could be correct there. And he went back to New York basically and he copied almost word for word, if not line by line, what this book had already said. And so the people at this time recognized him to be a charlatan. Listen, at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there was no grand library in, in, in Najd. There was no grand library in the Hijaz where he could have gone to access the works of the Christians and the Jews and then co-opted it. The claims are not on the same level. So whereas we can clearly see a clear line of borrowing by Joseph Smith we can also see in other aspects where his morals were just inadequate. I'll give an example. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was an upright man who did not engage in deviant uh, 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 relationships or behaviors. On the other hand, Joseph Smith was a very strange individual. He would send people out to go on missions and then he would force their wives to... Uh, do things with him. So he would actually lie and say, an angel came to me and said he would kill me if you don't enter into marital relations with me. And so a lot of people that initially joined his movement, one by one, fell away to the point that his own church split in half and he had to flee for his life towards the end of it. We do not see a similar situation with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His people not only accepted him, but when he marched into Mecca, he had the absolute right to take revenge on every individual that had killed and hunted down the Muslims. But they didn't. There was no genocide in Makkah. Correct me, Brother Hashim Amansu. Was there a genocide in Makkah, at Fath al makkah Was there a genocide? No, no? bloodshed. No bloodshed. No blood so, so this tells us that he was an upright man with strong morals. When you compare him with Joseph Smith, there simply is no comparison. I'll just give one more example, and I do recommend that people read the book, because by reading this book, I want you to compare it with the uh, biography of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, the biography by Martin Lings. So it's easy in the English to read. I prefer it. Uh, it's, it's very simple to understand. If you read those two books side by side, you will plainly see that the messenger was not a charlatan. I'll give one example. This individual, Joseph Smith, claimed that he could translate Egyptian hieroglyphs. And <laughs> eventually a person came around and he sold him this tablet or this column of, uh, of this Egyptian hieroglyph. Mm -hmm. Joseph Smith translated it, and the people believed that this tablet spoke about Abraham and about Moses and about the God in heaven, the Father, uh, sending messages to his people. 
However, shortly thereafter, they discovered the Rosetta Stone and they were able thereby to translate the Egyptian hieroglyphs and they realized he was just making it up as he went along to it this very... Yes, brother, uh, Yossi. I do want to add on to this about the Book of Mormon and about firstly about the gold plates and then about the 11 witnesses, right? Um, all fake news. <laughs> yes, I know it's all nonsense, right? But uh, when it comes to the gold plates, right? I'm from what I've noticed, okay, if you notice I'm Egyptology. Just get my charger and carry on, yeah? Yeah. Egyptology was uh, extremely prevalent at this time, right? Where basically the entire populace across the Western world was extremely, extremely, extremely fascinated with Egypt, right? And with Egyptian artifacts. You can see from the period of the 1800s up to the early 1900s, mm -hmm. right? Examples of essentially people like even taking things out of Egyptian tombs and then selling them to essentially rich people across the United States and Europe as essentially artifacts to, you know, decorate their homes with and essentially show off their valor, right? So Egyptology dazzled. The reason why Joseph Smith used Egyptian hieroglyphs, right, to essentially, you know, presented it, you know, to the populace that surrounded him was to mm -hmm. essentially mystify the people around him and make it seem more convincing as Egypt, as basically everybody was obsessed with Egypt at the time. It was a massive frenzy. Secondly, there, so it, it's him using tactics of a con man, essentially co-opting a trend at the time or a cultural trend at the time to, you know, get certain things out of people. Secondly, right, there's the issue with the 11 witnesses, okay? So there essentially is no evidence whatsoever, nor transmission by way of accurate methodology that two of the witnesses, okay, it was uh, Jacob and David Whitmer, right, were actually mm -hmm. present, essentially to bear witness to the plates or essentially to bear witness to what they saw with um, you just, know, Joseph just Smith. Quickly, are you aware that they later said that none of them ever saw any golden plates? And what no, uh, I, I, Joseph, their lead, the leader said this? Yep, they literally said uh, to their four people that later on said that none of them at any point ever saw the golden plates. In fact, what they saw was that Joseph Smith, uh, he, they didn't even see a seer stone. You know, they, uh, he said that he used a seer stone to look at the golden plates and translate them. In actuality, they said he would stick his head into a hat, something like a top hat, and then the angel would tell him what the scripture meant inside the top hat. So they oh reneged on is that book that we had up on the screen it documents this uh, from documents on Brigham Young University oh my god I actually didn't know that's very funny but I do want to continue with this point because it actually shows further right so essentially with Jacob and David Whitmer right um the along with that I actually didn't even know that it just so thank you for telling me that right? which is very funny but uh when it comes to Jacob and David Whitmer right Jacob and David Whitmer Okay, there's actually there's no evidence that they were even present in like the same city or in the same general vicinity as Joseph Smith at the time. Jacob Whitmer and David Whitmer at the time that we can tell from travel documents that they had and were essentially stored, you know, on their, you know, on you know, the archive of their person, right? Essentially shows that like one of them was in New York and the other one was in, I think, like a, a completely different city within, I think, like the state of either Nevada or Utah. But it was not the same area as Joseph Smith was at the time, right? It was essentially impossible for them to be present there. Secondly, when it comes to even just the majority of open witnesses, including Jacob and David Whitmer, there's no chain of transmission or other additional corroboration, right? Essentially that Jacob and David Whitmer were even there. So uh, essentially the Book of Mormon, if you have a Book of Mormon, right, they have a you know page at the beginning right that says essentially or you know page at the beginning that has you know essentially the set the 11 witnesses giving their testimony but apparently not only apparently were jacob and david whitmer not even there but none of them were there either uh, so which leader by the way said this i want to point out as well that um uh, they actually signed an agreement with him for profit sharing off of the book so how many when the book sold copies the 11 witnesses actually received money based on how well the book sold. So oh this is God. another reason why some of them reneged later on because they did not get their share of what they were promised. I don't know if this mm -hmm. happened with the Torah or with the Quran. So, you know, subhanAllah, you know, Allah exposes as the liars and the deceivers, you know. You couldn't to buy him. a Torah. In those days, though, you could not buy like a separate Torah. In these days as well, uh, you know, Sifrei Torah, Torah scrolls are free. Like you have mm -hmm. to essentially go to a scrabble house and then they'll give it to you. So yeah, I'd just like to add as well. Yeah, yeah I'd ahead. like to add as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, Mr. Feroz, um, I hope you got your answers from two excellent uh, explanations that have been provided by Ijaz and Yossi. Um, what are your thoughts? 
Oh, thank you. They're very great answers. Um, very good answers, actually, from both of you. Thank you. And I just wanted to add one more thing. There's a book by uh, Subo Ahmed. It's called uh, Forbidden Prophecies. I'm sure you've heard of it. I read that as well, and um, it talks about certain criteria, really strict criteria, actually, that have to be met for someone to be um, even considered a prophet. So there was loads of ones like uh, un un um, unambiguous prophecies, um, just stuff like that. And uh, when I was looking through Joseph Smith's uh, prophecies, they're all like very, very, um, what's his name? Um, the guy, the famous guy from a history, uh, the one that everyone, Nostradamus, a bit like his, very wavy, nothing, nothing there. And um, also, no miracles performed by him as well. So I was just thinking, if thank I you, just add that as well. This. So this book is called The Forbidden Prophecies. Um, who is the author, Hashem? I think it's Abu Zakaria. Abu Zakaria, yeah, but not Abu Rahman, Abu Zakaria. Uh, Mike, did you want to add something, please? Yeah, just very small, just a little add on to it. <clears throat> um, I feel like, uh, forgive me, I don't have the facilities in front of me to double check this. So if it is wrong, I apologize in advance. But off the top of my head, on when I was looking at different religions personally, I'm pretty sure that Joseph Smith's claim was the Book of Mormon. He was guided to it, dug it up, and found it. So if it's mistakes in the book, how is that possible if it was sent to him and he was guided to it? Does that make sense? I think there's something very contradictory in that. Yeah, that well, they can say he, yeah. he, he dug it up and it was there for thousands of years and there was mistakes when it was written. That don't make sense to me. He, he literally uh, says uh, later on that he never actually had golden plates. And so these documents, again, are at a university named after the junior leader of the Mormon church at that time, Brigham Young. He was, think of him like a successor. So Brigham Young University actually did research and they tried to find and identify all of these narratives and see if they, like, are they consistent? Do they add up? And as Brother Yossi mentioned, literally every step of the way, people were in the wrong places at the wrong times, with the wrong statements, wrong witnesses, everything, subhanAllah. So Brother Mike, beautiful point, and Yossi, thank you for your point. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, all of you. Indeed.